Our next randomly selected student is uh, Jackie Sly. Jacqueline is a senior studying mechanical and ocean engineering. She, ocean engineering has a fan here. She grew up in Southern California and was first attracted to MIT because she wanted to see what weather was like. <laughs> On campus, she is involved with MIT Motorsports, Sigma Kappa Sorority, the MEC-E Mechanical Engineering Peer Advisors, Senior Gift Committee, the MIT Marine Robotics Team, and the MIT Women's Initiative. Last year, she received the Alfred A.H. Kyle Ocean Engineering Award for outstanding research for her work in ocean robotics. When she's not working on race cars or being an MIT student, she enjoys biking around Boston, painting, and cooking. Uh, next year, she will be back in Southern California working at Caltech's Jet Propulsion Lab. The title of Jackie's talk is Men's at Manus. So please welcome Jackie Sly. Ah, cool. <laughs> the MIT motto, Men's and Manus, conveys the importance of hands-on learning to the MIT community. An MIT education is not entirely forged in the classroom or in the lecture hall. It's kind of a one-two punch. You've got what you've learned from the community at MIT, but also what you're learning in the classroom. And sometimes these student-driven projects, these independent projects, will push students farther technically than their classroom parallels. But it's challenging. It's challenging to balance student independent work with the rigorous demands of being an MIT student. But I would argue that these are kind of the most important opportunities we get here at MIT. I've learned a lot here, but my biggest takeaways are from my experiences on two student project teams. My successes and failures in those processes, those are what define me as an engineer. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather. He was a retired carpenter, and he instilled in me a passion for building something unique. He died when I was in fourth grade, and it was hard to lose him when I was so young. But I'm really glad he got to share that passion with me. And my parents, who are an electrical engineer and a computer scientist, showed me how an excitement for building something could be extended beyond carpentry. You could guess, when I was a kid, I really liked robots. <laughs> so as a high school student, I joined our robotics team, but that was a group effort, and while I learned a lot, the thing that stands out to me is my experience as a high school student building a robot for fun, just on my own. I built a simple little fish, and while it wasn't a very technically complex project, it gave my high school self the opportunity to realize that this was something I really wanted to do, that I wanted to become an engineer. So when I found out I was coming to MIT, I was so excited, because this hacked together little fish I built I knew that this was only the beginning. My first experience working with my hands on MIT came during the IEP of my freshman year. The marine robotics team was leading an IEP activity called Introduction to Underwater Robots. And I signed up. You know, The fish thing kind of reminded me of this. I was excited to be building my first MIT robot. I even got to water jet some parts, which was entirely new for me. So after IEP, I stuck with the team, and I started working on our autonomous underwater glider project. The glider was our effort to put together a low-cost, low-energy robot that could be used offshore near oil rigs so that we could detect oil spills earlier on. Fast forward to the second semester of my sophomore year. The team has built several prototype gliders, but we've also gone through several transitions in leadership. We became a very young team very suddenly. We had our leadership graduate and leave us with a very, very big project. After our transitions in leadership, they all culminated in me being put in charge of the team as a sophomore, which was exciting and scary. And I can look back and say that leading the marine robotics team was simultaneously the most fulfilling experience I had and the most frustrating. But under my leadership, the team zeroed in on our goal of having a glider ready for an open water test. And after a long year and summer, we were finally ready to go to Alaska. We had agreed as a team that our goal in Alaska was to deploy the glider untethered, meaning without a rope, and our mission was going to be going down to 50 feet. So here we were, 
lowering the glider into the water. I felt a wave of anxiety rush over me. Yes, we had built prototype gliders, and yes, we had tested them in the pool, but every pool test had revealed some sort of problem. We always had a mechanism that broke or a subsystem that failed, or more often than not, a leak. How could I be so sure that this time, that this time would be any different? But we trusted ourselves and our engineering, and we knew we needed to try. This real world test was going to mean more to us than anything else. Nothing could calm my nerves as we let the glider go. But soon enough, it was coming back. And its red fin could easily be seen from where we were standing. For the first time in my life, oh, I forgot the picture was in there. For the first time in my life, I wept out of sheer joy. It was so great to have our robot back. But mainly, I had been so convinced that some subsystem would fail inevitably, and that the glider would sink and be lost forever. Working with and leading the marine robotics team gave me a glimpse into what's required to see a project to completion. It gave me a chance to put to test the process of iterative design, and I got plenty of prototyping experience. But at the end of my sophomore year, I knew I needed to branch out. I knew I wanted to do something else here with my time at MIT. Underwater robots wouldn't define me. I decided to join the MIT Motorsports team, because who here hasn't wanted to build a formula-style race car? <laughs> But also, I really appreciated the team's hard work, and I had already gotten to know some of the team members. I knew that was a place I could really thrive. So I joined the team. The MIT Motorsports team builds formula-style race cars, which we compete in a competition run by the Society of Automotive Engineers. Typically, the cars are internal combustion engine cars. But the Society of Automotive Engineers has recently introduced an electric vehicle category, and the MIT Motorsports team is working on our first electric car. When I joined the team, it was part of the chassis suspension subteam, and I was given the project of working in, on the suspension control arms, or A-arms. It was a straightforward enough project, but I hit plenty of road bumps. And here is a car for reference. I forgot I had slides. <laughs> it's hard to admit the sheer number of mistakes I made during that process. On March 2nd, 2014, I finished and installed the A-arms on the car, despite having started working on them in the summer of 2012. It's hard to admit those mistakes, and I'm going to share with, them, with you them today, but those failures, those have really defined my experience here, and I learned a lot from them. There are eight A-arms on the car. Each of them has eight to ten distinct parts. My original design lacked standardization, it was overtly complex. It required a lot of work, but I pushed forward. In manufacturing, each step builds on the next. And unfortunately, when I was making the arms, I made a mistake very late on in the process of machining them, which forced me to start over. And it was hard to accept that I needed to start over, but I'm really glad we had to. <laughs> By starting over, I was able to look back at the modeling and the design of these parts. And with the help of my teammates, I realized that I had made mistakes then too. The original A-arms, as designed, would have failed under extreme loading conditions. So not only did the A-arms need to be refabricated, but they also needed to be redesigned. At the same time, the team was facing similar issues with our frame. And systematic changes that we made to the frame also in impacted the design of the A-arms. So with my teammates' help, I went back to the drawing board. Had to bottle a lot of frustration and a lot of self-loathing for all the mistakes I made. But we redesigned the arms, and we refabricated them. And eventually, they got on the car. I had to come face to face with my fear of failure. Most MIT students fondly remember the first time they failed a test. The memory of the first set of course marks I got, or the first C in a course, those fade into the background. But looking at the digital readout of a caliper and realizing that a critical dimension on a part was wrong, and this mistake, extended to the full set of parts that had been made over the course of several days, that's a memory that sticks with me. I was lucky to have such a strong support network in my teammates. They were there throughout the entire process, and they helped me build a second set of arms. Our car has seen a lot of setbacks, many of that same nature. We've had failures in almost every subsystem. But that isn't stopping us. What unifies us as a team is our desire to see the car completed and our desire to get to competition one day. But it's something that keeps us going 
And where would the fun be in letting those failures prevent us from reaching our goal? Crazy student projects are an essential aspect of the MIT we know and love. It would be disappointing to leave MIT without being able to look back and point at something incredible and say, I helped build that. To be able to say that I helped build that and then it took all of my energy and all of my creativity and all of my passion to work on that project while being a full-time MIT student. Academics should always come first, and there's a lot to learn in the classroom here at MIT. But there's also a lot to learn in this context, in working with your hands, in seeing a project through from start to finish, in branching out on your own. I think these are lessons that we can't replicate in a classroom. Yes, we do have classrooms where we're working on projects, and those always feature the guidance of a professor or of a TA. And at the end of the day, you have to satisfy the requirements set forth by the class. Having your own project lets you go forward in any direction you like. And you can switch direction mid-course. And you can make mistakes. Going out on your own will always have an increased risk of failure. But failure, failure is one of those things that we're looking for when we go out and we look out for these hands-on opportunities. Because those failures, the ones you come into yourself, those are the experiences that will stick with you. These are your four years at MIT. It's up to you to make MIT an education that comes out of and expands out of the classroom. You'll find that it's up to you to push yourself, to push yourself farther than you ever thought you could be pushed, but also to redefine yourself, to break out of what's expected for you. You're the only person who can take advantage of the hands-on opportunities available to you as a member of the MIT community. But don't be afraid. Don't let a risk of failure prevent you from getting your hands dirty. Because looking back at the time I've had here at MIT, the times that I failed, those are the experiences I'll remember. Thank you, Jackie. Terrific and uh, just a great, great example of um, science and engineering in action and what happens here at MIT and a real uh, call to jump in and do things that you don't know whether you're going to be successful or not. Um, and that's really what life is all about. So good for you.